back there and fall and break my neck or something like that but here's the thing though you know in Africa which I'm from we say a man doesn't really trip and fall you know his balls bounce like this like a pendulum keep him back in balance yeah. all right let me just introduce myself because this is I learned this is how it works here in America you gotta introduce yourself you know my name is Sule your name is audience. <laughs> hey, nice meeting you. Um, I do the jokes. You guys do the laughs. Um, this is this is how it is for, for me, right? I try to get all my African brothers coming here and support me. So I find out that it's really difficult because they're all working. You know, nine days a week. <laughs> okay, and. Uh, you know, whenever I try to reach out to them, you know, I hear that, you know, the person you're trying to reach is not available. <laughs> you know, they usually work in basements. <laughs> you know, in shoe shops. And it seems like, uh, from what I understood, Metro PCS, our, you know, no network, <laughs> was not able to reach that far. Okay? The, the only guy I was, supposed, I was uh, able to reach out to told me he would not make it because he worked for Hugo Boss. You know, later on um, I found out that um, he works for a Mexican bodega <laughs> for Hugo the Boss. Okay. Let, me, let me explain how it works in Africa. You guys have it nice here in America. You don't even know that, right? You see like in America you're working, you don't want to go to work, you know, you have the option, you know, sick days, you can take it wherever you want. In Africa we have healthy days because we're usually sick. <laughs> So the day I feel good, I call my boss, I said, hey boss, I'm feeling very nice today. You can make it. He said, enjoy. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> you guys have been really good here. Like, speaking, of, speaking of sick, like, in America you make a joke, people laugh like in their heart out. You know, that's why they have those little expressions like, lol, you know, loud or loud or, you know, laugh my ass off and shit. So in Africa, this is the version, you know, we usually used to do this very, you know, sick, they're hungry and tired. So when you say something funny, people don't have that energy to laugh, you know, they go like this, you know. <laughs> that means your joke is fucking funny. Anyway, um, you guys have had it really nice and easy here. For example, you want to travel, right? You guys have zip car, we have zip ass. We use donkeys, you know, and shit. To go green and save on global warming. And it's very nice and sophisticated. It's similar to what's happening in America. You can pick your donkey up in one village and then drop it in a different village. And uh, in the event, you know, God forbid, that's how they say in America. If something happened to it, you don't have to worry because we also have triple A. The uh, African Ass Association. <laughs> you, know? you know, I call them, you know what they do? They send me a tow donkey. Come and carry my rental ass to the repair center. Yeah, man. Um, I love Africa, but everybody want to come to America. I mean, I remember when I went to do my visa, you know, there was a chimpanzee in the line with an application form. <laughs> and a fucking two photographs. Wanted to come to a Bronx Zoo because he heard monkeys over here have better living conditions. They even have, you know, Take care for the babies. Sure. I walk up to the visa guy. You know, he told me how long you want to stay to in America. I told him one week. I think that was like 2001. <laughs> you know, fast forward. Fast forward in New York. You know, came to New York. It was very nice. Summertime and everything is nice and glamorous. Oh my God, you know, skinny white girls looking sexy. You know, wearing almost nothing. It was summertime. I had a sweater because it was freezing. <laughs> You know, they have those little shorts that says pink or juicy on their ass. Or oh, I love New York. I'm like, yeah, I love New York too. <laughs> then I look at one building, all the way on the top, I see a sign. It says Sex and the City tonight at 8 o'clock. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I knew I was going to love this country. I can feel it perfectly. You know, I wanted to go to HBO. On my way, I saw an Indian buffet, all you can eat for $9.99. Like, yeah, ha ha ha. 
related <laughs> to this, uh, <laughs> to this uh, sex in the city. I walk in there, I ate all the chicken tikka masala, <laughs> and a gallon, drank a gallon of mango lassi. You know, that's the weird thing in America. They say you know it's very awful that you know you feel your stomach, you sleep on the fullest stomach, you wake up, it's miserable. There's nothing we love more than that in Africa. Waking up on the full stomach, that's like, the most amazing thing that can happen to a human being. You don't have to worry about breakfast and shit. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Um, I bought me an iMac computer, very nice. I mean, 24 inches Apple computers made in China. Amazing, man. Now, 27 inches. I mean, that's roughly the screen. Uh, the size of the screen of the movie theaters in Africa, you know? But whenever I sit on it, there's a stupid question that comes in, uh, you know, they ask me a question, do you want to bang the girls in your neighborhood? <laughs> now, I live in South Bronx, I look so... <laughs> Thank you. I look, uh, I look through the window, there's, you know, uh, Sheena and uh, Shana having a fist fight on, on some cool aid I'm like, no, I do not want to bang girls in my neighborhood. Thank you. I'm like, I'm like, whoever, whoever write this message, whoever wrote this message, I'm sure, a message, I'm sure you, you live somewhere nice and awesome, you know, like you know, Palo Alto, California. So if you can help me bang girls in your neighborhood, I would really much appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, they think I'm stupid or something. Another, another, another stupid question comes up. Oh, do you want to um, earn your MBA in uh, three weeks? You know, University of Phoenix online? I'm like, no, thank you. You know, then, then they get another more, you know, even stupider question. Um, leaving socials, deals of the day. Oh, if, uh, if, I, if I buy uh, a steak for lunch, I get a free cupcake. Totally fucking deal. Now, reverse it. Let me, the day they send me an email and say if you buy a cupcake, you get a free steak. Now, that's a, that's a deal for me. Because I understand that's a deal that I can take all my company for lunch for, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. But then, you know, white people in general ask me the most stupid questions since I came here. Like, yo, excuse me, Shirley, could I ask you a question? Well, now, if you don't understand, that was my British accent. I'm like, yeah, uh, why did you come to America? No, is he serious? So they think usually I came here because I work hard, you know, I'm a hard worker, American dream, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna fight, nah, man. Could not be, could not be any wrong than that. Um, I came here because I was, la I was lazy. I mean, I was so lazy that when I was in Africa, I was a vegetarian. I would not run after anything to chase it and Thank you. I mean, I came here so I could sit in my Bronx apartment and watch Netflix. Okay. Game of Thrones, the Targaryens, and the fucking Lannister. You know? Yeah, man, and order food for delivery and give the guy a dollar. It's very nice and very special. That's why, that's why I came to America. But every time I do that, I get some interruption, like, you know, some guy knocking on my door, raising, raising money for charity. He said for a dollar, if I can just contribute a dollar a month, you know, they can save the whole, you know, family in, uh, in Sri Lanka, the tsunami victim. I said, all right, all right, that sounds good. I sit the guy down, I show him my family album. <laughs> 16 brothers and a, and a coat on the cover. <laughs> The guy felt so bad for me that um, he ended up doing two, two things. He wished me good luck in America and he wrote me a check. I said, thank you, come back again. Now, I see a red light there. I don't know if, uh, you know, my African brother was supposed to turn that off. But I guess he didn't do his job. So I'll do one more joke and then I'll give you the, um, you know, the floor to the next person. Well, anyway, I was trying to look for a real American. Like if I can find somebody who's truly an American, I went down south, you know, in Alabama. <laughs> I saw this guy looking like Larry the Cable Guy starting a restaurant. Right? He ordered a chicken, fried chicken, the whole chicken he wanted. He said he wanted a Kentucky fried chicken. They brought the chicken, he looked at it, he stick his finger in the chicken ass. He's like, this chicken is not from Kentucky. Send it back. <laughs> Second chicken came back, he stick his finger up and there. He's like, nah, this chicken is not from fucking Kentucky. Send it back. The third chicken came, he put his finger in there. I saw his face change. He put his thumb in there, he's like, yeah, this chicken is fucking dead. <laughs> it's Kentucky. <laughs> I 
I said, okay, that's cool. I was so surprised. I wanted to ask him how the hell he knew uh, to tell where the chicken is from, you know? And I wanted to ask him where it's from, but then I realized he might just pull his pen down and tell me, you want to feel it? <laughs> 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 you determined that. Um, thank you. That's it. The red light.